Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here on the old uh, Inside Outboard channel where we try to have a little bit of outboard fun. Um, if you looked at my last two vids, you'd see I've been remodeling and I'm still remodeling. Well, I wouldn't call it remodeling as more so than repairing. Um, started out with a freezer dying and just went downhill from there. But anyway, uh, so I had to put this little five and one half, 1963, cutie, uh, on hold. But I'm getting back on that now. It had a busted shift handle. Uh, whole lot of things wrong with it. But, uh, so we're going to get back on that and see if we can't uh, get it back all in one piece and put it back to use as a good outboard. That's what we are going to do. You understand? So, on this little five and one half, um, there are some things that are a little bit kind of quirky. You have to pull the power head to put a new impeller in there. Wasn't my idea. But that's not a big job on one of these little guys. Um, so then you have to drop the lower unit, do the impeller, pull the power head, stick everything back up. And one of the things that gets a little confusion confusing confusing is uh the carbon spring washers cuppies o-ringies and all that that you have to put on the drive shaft before you can go back with the power head so I'm going to show you how we do that and how you get that done. And uh, so, I say, let's get to it. All right, the first thing that I'm going to have to do before I can put the lower unit back on, you can see that stud broke off there, the head of that bolt. So I'm going to heat that with the torch. Heat it until everything's good and red. Get it good and red hot, I'll be back. Be pretty red now. Let's see if the old grips will get her out. She's a glowing and a showing. Come right out. I also, you know, you want to tap on it with a hammer like that. Um, kind of break that corrosion bond and get that out of there. Get it out of there. Alrighty. Now, let's see if we can get back over here. And. I've got the lower unit, and we'll have to see how hard this is going to be to stab in there, line up. I don't even know what I did. Where is that? Is that down here? Get me some bolts. There they are, all three of them. 
clean them on my wire brush just a little. And I'm gonna take a little PB blaster, shoot up in them holes. Too shifty on me, Rod. What's the problem, me? And what's the problem? Ooh, that's still hot. <laughs> there we go. Just get things on here a little bit. Now let me get me a zippy gun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know what size those are. They ain't that size. I know what size they aren't. And they aren't not that size. I am still quite, quite disorganized around here, but I'm trying to get it somewhat doable. for right now so I can see what I got up here slide you over here yeah. okay you can see I uh if you look right here you can see the shifter there's forward neutral reverse um Got the base all cleaned up. Then I put a little RTV black around the edge of here because I could see some light, little small pieces of light. That's all dry. And now I'm going to take the uh, Permatex high temp and put a thin coat around this for the gasket. I got my gasket. Should 
be about like that right there, I think. So, get me a little permatexy on there. Yeah, I'm going to have to unplug it first. You know how that goes. I'll be back. And this don't need to be a, a super thick thing. Just enough so I can snooze it around with my finger. A little. And make sure she's sticking. I find it easier to do that. Get out of there. When uh, the gasket ain't moving all around on you. Okay, get me a piece of paper towel. That off of my drive shaft. See where I need it much thicker than that anywhere. Right there is a little thin, but that's fine. I take a little bit of that. But hey, look at there. Something like that's what I'm after. that dry for a little bit so it holds that gasket in place for me you understand okay this is the spring compression washer thing uh, I'm talking about um, there is there's the manual and there's the setup so the way this is going to work is you'll have your drive shaft sticking up in there. First thing you're going to put on is that little compression washer. It's a little cup. And you want the, the cup to face up so it can hold the spring. Like that. So the next thing in line is the spring. Okay. The next thing is the carbon washer itself. Now on this carbon washer, one side will fit into this spring and the other side won't. And it won't because there's a rubber o-ring in there. So the side that fits in without the rubber o-ring goes down. So that's where we're at so far. Okay, that set up. We're looking a lot like the picture there. Okay, now the last two, it's kind of hard to see, but on the washer, not so much. But you've got the metal washer right here, and it has a little lip on it. Hopefully you can see that right there. One side is flush, smooth, and flat. The other side has that little lip on it. Okay, now what that lip is going to do it's going to take this felt washer thing. See, we're looking a lot like the pitcher. We got the metal washer and we got the felt washer. This will just sit down smooth side right on top of the carbon. Okay? And another way of looking at it, this little felt thing 
is also got a little lip. It's real hard to see, but it, it does. There's a little raised edge right there. And the other side is flat smooth. So the way to think of it is these, you see this hole here, they're going to fit down in there nice and tight. You see? Both of them do. And so there's that. You can see where the carbon washer has polished that all up. So this actually will go right on top, like so. And then we have the exact same thing you are seeing here. And that's how all that goes down on your drive shaft. Just like that. There it is. That's it. That's all there is. There ain't no more. You don't need no goo. You don't need no goo and pucky. The one thing that you do need. Remember that little pin I showed you that went up through the drive shaft? That little pin is right there. Right there. It goes horizontally through the drive shaft to hold the brass. I hope you can see um, I've got this well cleaned. Um, I use some carb cleaner intake break free. Got that all clean and now we're gonna uh, after the gasket has set We'll put this on. Be right back. Yep, I got it. Ooh. There it is. There we go. Yep. It's toy. It's toy. Oh, you can do it. Oh, man. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There. There. I think we got one more like that on this side. You can't see it, but oh man. Oh man. <clears throat> Where you at? <sighs> Shit. It's tight. Where you at? Oh shoot. There. the old spark checker here we got about an eight <laughs> I 
if I put it to about less than a 16 inch, I get a little bit of spark. That's not good. Yep, it's that time of year. Oh. Well, I guess I could cook some barbecue on... No. That won't work, so... I'll show you what I'm doing to get... My barbecue. Remember, I'm from Florida, Georgia, Alabama, that region. And, uh... I like me some barbecue. So... My homemade barbecuing um, thing that I had made, I don't know, about five years ago, it finally got Kodiak um, salt spray because I live right next to the ocean. It finally got Kodiak and just rotted, rusted, and fell apart. So, I can't cook the barbecue on my wood stove in the house. So, I've got to come up with something different. If you ever want to know what's in one of these boiler mates, um, which is a hot water tank that hooks to your furnace, basically. Um, so there's the outer metal drum there. Then there's about a good inch layer of hard closed cell foam in there. And then the plastic liner that holds the actual water. Um, but I'm going to turn the boiler mate into a broiler, broiler mate, grill smoker. Because mine after about oh, over a decade, uh, the ones that I had made out of some old electric smoker, finally just rusted and rotted away. And I've got to have my Bob Coo, you know me. No, I'm saying. So that's what's in there. And I've got the lid for that hole down there. That'll be where I can clean out the ashes and such. There's the foam. And so forth. And I, I've got to have to do a lot of grinding and such. Yet. And see what I'm going to do for handles up top and cut a door. But it's going to be the broiler made. And then I'll have to weld me a strip of steel around the top here and then grind this kind of, you know, so it covers it good. Yeah, but it's the beginning anyway. I got the hard part done, which was getting the innards out of it, getting this old nasty foam and stuff. That's the, the sucky part. Okay, mm. I got a bit of 
sourdough bread with some olive oil. Yeah. And this is my this is my bread lady. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. This is my bread girl. Ugh. Alaskan sourdough, sourdough, yummy. Catherine, um, is the sourdough gal, bakes me this wonderful bread if you've never had Alaskan off the chart sourdough oh my goodness you don't know what you're missing put it back there yeah and then of course I showed you in my last video Ooh. I like me some elk. Ooh hoo! Mmm. Do you know how good this is gonna? Oh my goodness! Look how perfect I made that. Okay. Now, um, some people like. Uh, Monterey Jack, whatever. Actually, let me go this way. That's better. This is Havarte. Havarte? 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 What? Keegan Hyper? What? What? It's good cheese. Yeah, man. Mmm. That's good. Oh my goodness. Sourdough bread. Elk. Elk. Cooked perfectly and rare. Mm-hmm. Havarti cheese. Oh my goodness. We're not done. We are not done. We're not done. Oh, look at what I'm doing. Oh my goodness. We're not done. We're not done. Can't have peppers. Or excuse me, tomatoes. Without some peppers. Mmm. We're not done. Do you see that? Louisiana. Ooh, yummy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna stick that in the old open in the oven for about like you know 400 degrees for like uh 13 minutes. Yummy. Vids are a coming on Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass.